Well, hey everyone. I want to welcome you to our session on worship and surrender. If you're like me, the word surrender is an immediate turnoff. I grew up with two brothers and surrendering was never an option. Uh, fight to the death was more like our motto. Defend your space in the car, defend your turf in the backyard or the neighborhood. And I think that mentality easily sneaks into our adult life as well. Surrendering really is countercultural to everything that culture tells us. Culture tells us to win at all costs and to defend our rights and our preferences and to demand what the world owes us. But Jesus tells us differently. This is what Jesus tells us in Matthew 16. It says, Then Jesus said to his disciples, If you truly want to follow me, you should at once completely reject and disown your own life, and you must be willing to share my cross and experience it as your own as you continually surrender to my ways. Surrender may be counter to the culture, but it's foundational to worship. If we want to put Jesus first, follow him and worship him, it begins with our surrender to him. It begins when we lay down our own life, pick up the cross and follow him. And now worship involves more than just surrender, but we can't really talk about other aspects of worship until we talk about surrender. I think worship begins with us echoing the desire of John the Baptist in John 3.30 when he said this about Jesus. He must increase and I must decrease. Because two things happen when we surrender. First, we get a new leader. When someone surrenders in war, they are submitted to the leadership of the ones they're surrendering to. And when we surrender to God in worship, we're declaring that we are no longer first in our own life. We are no longer central, but Jesus is. We surrender to his leadership and his lordship over our lives. We declare him first. We declare him central and everything in our life going forward falls beneath him and revolves around him. The incredible thing is in surrendering to Jesus, we don't just get a leader. We get a savior, a friend, a lord, a forgiver, a counselor, and so much more. Surrendering to Jesus is different because we don't become a captive, we become free. The second thing that happens when we surrender is we give up our rights. In surrendering to Jesus, not only do we declare Him Lord and desire His increase, but we also lay down ourselves and desire our decrease. Now that doesn't mean that we lose our identity or that we think less of ourselves or devalue ourselves in any way. What it means is that we lay down our preferences, our ambitions, our comfort, and we surrender our will and our way to follow the will and the way of Jesus. We become a slave to righteousness instead of a slave to sin. Surrender is about the equal realization of the fact that Jesus is on the throne and I am not. And that's where worship starts. When I lift him up and I bow down. I love the words of the hymn, I Surrender All. It says, all to Jesus I surrender, all to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him and in his presence daily live. This hymn reminds us of several things. It says, all to Jesus I surrender. It reminds us that surrender is all or nothing. There's no such thing as partial surrender in the kingdom of God. It is an unconditional and full surrender. It says, all to him I freely give, because Jesus will never force our surrender and he'll never force our worship. For our love to be pure, we have to give it freely. And though there will be a day that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess Jesus as Lord, it won't be because he forced it. It will be because his identity was revealed to all creation. Jesus won't force our surrender, but he passionately invites it. I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily live, the hymn goes on to say. The power of my surrender to Jesus is from daily surrendering. This is what Jesus said in Luke 9 verse 23. And he said to all, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. We worship well when we seek to surrender to the kingdom of God, the leadership of Jesus, and the power of the Spirit on a daily basis. We were created for this surrender, and it's the place where worship begins, the place where we lift him up in glory, and the place where we bow down in surrender.